Hello, my name's Jackie and I'm a volunteer at the Annick Garden. But also, I'm a member of Butterfly Conservation. That's kind of like RSPB for butterflies. And I've been a member for 40 years. When I was a child, I used to catch butterflies and kill them and pin them out on boards. And the way we used to kill them was with laurel. And when you go around the Annick Garden, you'll find out that laurel is quite a poisonous thing. But what we did with the butterflies was crush laurel leaves and put them in a jam jar and then the butterflies would die. I always feel guilty about that so that's why I joined Butterfly Conservation so that I could do something about trying to preserve them. What I'm going to talk to you today about are the butterflies that you'll see as you wander around the garden. There are two main places to see butterflies and that is in the ornamental garden up at the top and in the roots and shoots which is not quite as well known as the rest of the garden. I'm going to do it by seasons and I'm going to show you some pictures as well. First of all there are three butterflies, some of the prettiest ones, that we see very early in the year and that's because they hibernate in places like cool sheds or even in your spare bedroom. These are the butterflies that you're likely to see. This is, turn it up the right way. This is the peacock. Everybody remembers the peacock. There's also Red Admiral. These are usually found in the autumn time, but they do hibernate. Red Admirals are migratory. They come from North Africa. And the last one is the small tortoise shell. So those three you might see as early as January. But if you do find one in your house or in your shed, they will probably die because it's not warm enough for them to be out and about. A bit later on, they come out properly in the springtime. So when you get to sort of May and June, these are the kind of butterflies you're going to see. Can you guess what that one's called? It's called an orange tip for obvious reasons. It's got orange tips. The female is more dowdy, but the underside of the wings is so, so pretty. If you spot one of these fl flying around, try and, the try and see it when it, it stops, because the back wings are absolutely beautiful. Another one you're going to see is a green veined white. There are three different kinds of white butterflies and everybody thinks, ah, white butterfly, cabbage white. But this one would rather run a mile than take anything to do with the cabbage. This one is a very early visitor. So about April, May time, you'll begin to see this one flying about, taking nectar from bluebells, daffodils. Another one that you'll see earlier on is a common blue. There's a common blue. Unfortunately, common blues aren't very common anymore. So if you do see one of these, you're lucky. One of the butterflies that comes into the garden from the countryside it's called a meadow brown and these used to be quite common around or used to be quite good numbers but at the moment because of the the kind of summer and spring weather we've had they're not quite as common as they used to be one of the butterflies that is uh, around in the north country but not in the south is a wall brown when I first came to live here, I was so excited to see these wall browns in my, in my garden and, and I used to tell my, my butterfly conservation colleagues, I've seen wall brown, I've seen wall brown, and they used to sigh and say, oh, boring. But when I told them that I'd seen a holly blue, they went absolutely ballistic. Holly blues would breed in my garden in the south, but they are so rare up here. I've got a picture which I'll show you later. Here's one of the most wonderful butterflies. 
This is a painted lady. Painted ladies come all the way from North Africa. They come in stages and by the time we see them in, in the summer, in June, July and August, they have had two or three different broods on their way up. They'll come, they'll come from North Africa to Spain, have a brood, that brood will go up to France, they'll have another brood and that brood will end up in Britain where they'll have another one. The latest brood we have discovered within the last three years will travel in one hop from Britain all the way back to North Africa. They fly at great heights and they obviously use the, the, the trade winds, but they will go back from Britain, right the way up in Scotland, all the way back to North Africa in just one flight. How on earth they do it, I have no idea. I told you a few minutes ago about the holly blue, and here it is, tiny little thing. Not much bigger than a thumbnail, but they are absolutely gorgeous don't really know why it's called holly blue, lays its eggs in the spring on holly bushes. And when those butterflies hatch, they lay their eggs on ivy. So it really ought to be called holly and ivy blue rather than just a holly blue. Now, not so necessarily in the garden, but in grassy areas, you are going to find things called skippers. They look a bit more like moths and they're kind of halfway between a moth and a butterfly. So here's a small skipper and here, let me pick it up, it's a large skipper. See the difference is, oh, this one's got plain wings, this one's got spotty wings, but they're not much different in size. The small one is a bit smaller than the larger one. Now, do you remember, do you remember I was talking about white butterflies? Well, here's the other two. These are the offenders. These two are small white, large white, and these are the ones that lay caterpillars on the cabbages. These are the ones that gardeners absolutely hate. So, be aware that some white butterflies aren't as bad for you as others. One of the nicest butterflies we have is one that looks as if it's been pecked by birds. It's called a comma. The reason it's called a comma, and I haven't got a picture, is that on its underwing, which is very dark brown, there is a white comma. So they obviously named it a comma. So this is more of an autumn butterfly, but its ragged wings are natural. They haven't been pecked by birds. One of my favourite butterflies is called a speckled wood. And this is a speckled wood. Beautiful things. When you see them in the reel, they're like velvet. They're like dark brown, chocolate brown velvet with golden spots on. And they live in woodland edges. So garden like this is quite good for them because there's lots of trees and they can they can flit about in the shade. My favouritest of all is a very uncommon butterfly for this area although they have been seen in the garden and that's purple hair streak. Now they live in oak trees so we've got quite a lot of oak trees around the garden and these have been seen up in the ornamental garden taking nectar. So look out for a very unusual butterfly. Its iridescence, purple iridescence, really makes it shine. And lastly, I've got a small copper. Now these are very small, but again, beautifully marked, bright orange. You'll find all the butterflies taking nectar in a variety of plants. Everybody says, ah yes, the Bodleia bush, um, uh, that's the butterfly bush, that absolutely brilliant and you will see swarms of butterflies in the right conditions. But daisy flowers are very good. It strikes me that there is a, a colour palette for butterflies uh, in gardens 
the butterflies, the big ones, the uh, red admiral, the, the peacock, the, the painted lady, they would like but, uh, flowers of purple, blue, pink, those kind of shades. But the butterflies of the countryside tend to go more for yellows. And uh, it's an observation that I've made, but whether it's absolutely true, I don't know. Butterflies see flowers in ultraviolet. They, they see them in different colours to us. Uh, and they obviously attract in a different way. So when you come to the garden next, have a wander up to the ornamental garden and go around to the Roots and Shoots garden, which is absolutely brilliant. It's my favourite part of the garden. Go and have a look and see what butterflies you can spot as you wander around.